What's up, everyone? This is Rome, and um, starting something new today. We're gonna start highlighting black businesses. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while, and so nowhere to start but at the beginning. And uh, ironically, or maybe not ironically, maybe it's a sign of things to come. I'm speaking with someone that owns a travel agency, and since we want this endeavor to go places, maybe that's fitting. Um, today, I am talking to Sierra Bobo with Bobo's Travel. And if you don't mind, do you want to give a, a small introduction to the listeners today? Yes. Hi, everyone. Thank you uh, for tuning in, as well as thank you, Rome, for this opportunity uh, to expand uh, Bogos Travel. But uh, again, thank you, everyone, for listening and tuning in to um, this podcast. Yes, ma'am. Um, so in this day and age, most people, you know, they see the commercials, like the price lines and the, the this and the that. W what's the benefit of like setting up your travel through a business like yours? Yes, uh, definitely. This is something that I pride uh, my company in is that whenever you book online, a lot of times people did not know that uh, Expedia and Priceline, all of those things are actually using a travel agent. So you are actually paying for a service that you are not actually getting. And so with my company, um, I am wanting to promote that and let others know that when you travel, you should be looking at um, these estates or these hotels and these luxuries, just like you would a real estate, just like you would buy a house, you want that to be luxury. So you do want your travels to be held with that type of professionalism, that type of security as well. Yeah, it's, especially with, um, you know, within our community, we've seen over the last couple of months, you know, uh, a lot of black people going places um, internationally, you know, and then stuff happens. So you definitely want to have safety and security in mind um when someone sets up through you like can they is it going to be like necessarily like a, a chain hotel or could it possibly be like a more posh is it airbnbs do you do all that like what type of accommodations can someone expect if they're you know working with you to try to set up a trip Yes. So um, our establishment is to provide luxury travel to any families and small businesses. Um, so as far as what we specialize in, we can uh, get anywhere from budget friendly to luxury. We also offer like hotels um, from the Hiltons to maybe going into a resort all inclusive to Cancun. As far as your budget, it is completely up to you. Um, we are more into educating our clients. As far as the price, we offer free consultations. Our initial consultation is free. So we offer uh, three quotes and you will be able to have the opportunity to chat with me. We'll have a video consultation so that you will see details of the itinerary. Um, and it's up to you as far as how detailed you want that. If you wanted to include flights and if you wanted to include even a car rental, we have so many options available, um, but I don't limit my clients to just booking and done. I like to get them updated on activities to do um, all of the advisories need to know before you go and as well as like keeping them up to date on if their passport needs to be renewed, things like that. Um, I like to educate, for instance, I recently graduated from International Air and Hospitality in Vancouver, Washington. And when I was there, I actually became Valley Victorian. I actually became involved into it and saw the passion I had in behind travel. I wanted to show somebody just like me in my skin, um, the Black community, that we have the ability to travel and see the world just like others. So I wanted to understand why we were so, um, why were we so um, away from traveling? And a lot of times it's because it seems overwhelming. It seems like there's just a lot that is put into play. So that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Anything that you need. <laughs> right. And that's real too, um, because it hasn't been till I want to say like the last couple of years where I've seen like, um, you know, black people talking about things like passports and, you know, um, 
seeing like on Facebook, them taking like, you know, international trips and things of that nature. You know, obviously we've done that, you know, you know, black people have traveled the world. That's not new. But um, I think it's it's something where people are starting to think more about, like, you know, let me let me not just accept what I see here as like the end all be all. You know, let me go out there and see some sights and and, you know, have some experiences and things of that nature. Um, Absolutely. Um, I wanted to kind of pull off of that. And that's one reason why I actually started um, my YouTube channel for travel as well. Uh, just recently, I just launched a video actually Thursdays. Every Thursday, I post updated videos on travel. And I actually just recently done one about um people who have federal or criminal backgrounds, how they are able to still travel and still accommodate and getting a passport. A lot of times when uh, we are incarcerated or we feel like we are less than, we don't feel like we have that ability. And there are still availability out there. There's still opportunities to get that. And so I want to be able to educate, not just um, book your book your trip. I want to be able to educate my clients as well. And that is amazing. Like, I love the fact that you just said that because that's so very true. Um, I know this isn't that podcast, but um, I, I do other ones. And a lot of times we do talk about how much um, opportunity there is out there for, you know, people that have uh, formerly been incarcerated. You know, they serve their time and then I'll ask them stuff about voting and they're just like, oh, I can't vote. Right. Just as a blanket statement, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, well, can you or can you not? Because sometimes you can like, let's look at this, like, let's make sure before you just sort of decide. So I think that is amazing that you're letting people know the opportunities, you know, they have when they have possibly made a mistake in their past or let's be honest in this criminal justice system we have didn't make a mistake, but went to prison anyway. Um, right. so yeah, mm -hmm. de definitely. That is amazing. And you mentioned the YouTube channel, like let's, let's shout that out. Like what, what is that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you can actually just, uh, look up Boyos travel, B O Y O apostrophe S travel. Um, Boyos travel is something that I, um, started with my YouTube channel to kind of get people in the know of who I am, kind of get them excited about travel, but also let them know I'm a human being. I'm a person as well. And I'm here to book your trips just as much as I am. Like when I book my trips, I'm not um, going to pick, you know, just the, the cheapest spot, the best spot and the one and done online whenever there's opportunities to um build relationships for instance like with a travel agent when you have booked with them they see that you are basically now a vip client they want to build that relationship with you and keep you coming back to their spot so whenever you book it online you're just one and done you are booking the best rate possible you are not booking with a business that's going to build um, their rapport. So that's the difference as far as having that relationship to back you up. Uh, that's one reason why I, I definitely advocate for that because even if you don't book with me specifically, you run into an issue having that travel agent as an advocate will allow you that VIP per se. <laughs> yeah, man, having an advocate is always a, a, a great idea. Um, so I'm assuming because this is something that you, you know, put your ha uh, passion into um, that you are a traveler. Like, w what's your favorite place that you've been? Yes. Yeah, so honestly, I think it it started whenever I went to a mission trip and to Haiti in high school. I saw the passion of just learning the new culture um, and seeing how humbled they were and just to see the environment and uh, the beauty that was around it I saw that there was a need in America in general that needed to see this humbleness that were in third world countries that actually needed help um I am not one of those that's very materialistic I like to see the world before I buy everything so as far as me I want to expand that to other people you can get educated and become so wise by just expanding um, your your horizon, expanding where you've been to. Uh, for instance, I 
am from Knoxville, born and raised. I've been there and coming out of Knoxville and moving to a different city was nerve wracking and it was unfamiliar. Um, but I knew that inside of me, I needed to challenge myself to learn other cultures, other environments, and to be able to expand uh, my clientele as well. So once I started traveling as a young age, I felt that that urge to continue. And so I think that that is something that I promote in a lot of my clients, especially if you have kids, is to instill that vision of growing, get going and out and seeing the world just because they're young. It may seem like a hassle, but that's what I'm here for. Allow me to do that itinerary, but allow those kids to see the world because you never know what they may want to become because they have seen that. Yeah, that's, that's a, um, very true. And, and not only what they might become because they've seen that or, you know, what, what they might decide to try to make, you know, better. Um, exactly. Because yeah, like I know Haiti had definitely has the the certain like touristy spots that you know people might hit up, um, as well as DR. But like, yeah, like as you said, you went on a mission trip, so I'm assuming you know you weren't you know at a resort, um, right? Being in somewhere where it's like not not just getting that resort, I think everybody should experience having this time to give back to a country that is not of yours, having a country that. You know, I'm going into seeing UN soldiers scraping the side of my van and you just having to drive and like just hoping you don't die. But at the same time, experiencing it in a whole new world, it's like life changing and and something that you can't even explain to somebody else. Um, For instance, educating them on water filtration systems. While we were there, we were building over 200 water filtration systems to be able to teach them how to properly prepare food and be able to understand um, germs and bacteria. A lot of things like that, they do not have the tools or resources to do. So having that ability to go and travel and explore a new country, yes, that is exciting and fun, but why not also serve and learn and educate that uh, country as well? Yeah, for sure. But I, I I think it really does say something to your uh, particular singular spirit that that you want to do that, because, uh, you know, a lot of people go in places they they don't really respect it. They're going to have a good time. And a lot right. of times their good time involves like being just, you know, very messy like that. I mean, you know, it's a reason why they the ugly American stereotype exists. Right. Exactly. And you don't see it. Uh, and, and for me personally, I didn't even understand the um, privilege of even having to sleep on a bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a lot of stuff that us as Americans, we say, yes, we are um, held down in captivity or some of us are. But sometimes having that ability to see in a different eye, seeing another country in a different way, it kind of helps you come back home and see it in a new light and wanting to help um, in a different way. Uh, For me, it helped me not be so um, quick to feel like I needed to succeed and and achieve everything, but to slow my life down and slow down and be thankful for the small things. Definitely. And that's one thing I think a lot of Americans don't realize either. Um, You know, we definitely have poverty in this country and we definitely have, um, you know, people that suffer due to the poverty in this country. Mm -hmm. But in most cases, the poor person in this country probably is pretty wealthy somewhere else um right so yeah that that's definitely something it helps to real or helps to get clarity on when you travel um and before we move off haiti i i sort of just have to say they are definitely going through it right now um and Mm -hmm. you know the thoughts and prayers whatever you can do uh in regards to haiti i'm sure they would appreciate it because i i want to say politically they they're still sort of like in the midst of a 
military coup like uh it, right well yeah. right now gangs are are controlling um haiti so it, it is it is very um harsh for the community just imagine if the government could not control the city and gangs were controlling the city they don't think as far as uh the violence that is involved in that um a lot of tragedies and innocent children and women a lot of people are getting hurt by that uh, a lot of things we don't think of on a daily they are going through <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for all intents and purposes, in America, if you were just to sort of think of whatever movie you watch where, like, society falls and, you know, like a zombie apocalypse, whatever, mm -hmm. like, like it's sort of that right now, you know, might is making right in Haiti. Um, exactly. Yeah, so that that's that's crazy, uh, and, and hopefully that can get resolved fairly, amicably, like, but it's, you know, what do you do? Um so back to sort of lighter topics. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to cross this <laughs> into my political podcast, but um, so Haiti, you went to you, you just you developed a spirit of service. Um, if you did want to go somewhere, just, you know, let your hair down, have a little bit of fun. You got a fun destination that you love. Um, yes, I have. Um, I do have a fun destination. I'm going to stay in in the U.S. because um, a lot of people like they don't like to go out of the U.S. So my personal favorite in the U.S. is probably going to be Miami. I know that everybody, anybody who's been probably is like, yeah, that's probably the lively state. I'm Florida in general, anywhere you go there. But Miami is probably my favorite. It's the clearest water I've been to in in the States. And as far as um, just the lifetime, the nightlife, I just love everything about it. I'm one of those that um, loves the heat and I miss um, Knoxville and Tennessee's weather um, as I am in Michigan now, right now. So I definitely try to get the heat as much as possible. So for me, I try to get to Florida as much as possible. <laughs> Hey, I've heard really great things about Miami. I've never been myself. I actually would want to go for the food. Um, yes, the culture <laughs> there. <laughs> right, right, right. But so when when you say like uh, Miami, in my mind, I'm assuming this is like a, a more pricey place to sort of get around. If someone wanted to set up a package, like could you do a budget Miami package or are there certain places where it's like, look, we, we can't really budget this. This is going to be a, like a trip. Yes. And I love that you said that because that is exactly what I get a lot. A lot of times people call me and they're like, I want to go to Hawaii, but I've heard it is so expensive or Miami and I've heard it's so expensive, but every destination has an off season route or has an off season to when it is the cheapest rate. So having a travel expert like me, I go and I research this as well as on my YouTube channel, I try to give um updates on when these off seasons are so for instance Miami think of when kids are going back to school you got to think a lot of these hot and um summertime places that people are wanting to go to in the summer are going to be discounted off season when kids are traveling in school so for me personally I would say Miami is going to be the best rate September um, to October, even the end of August, you're going to see some good rates right there because kids are going back to school and you're going to get more of the um, older couples, more of the uh, luxury couples at a good rate. Okay, all right. So we got we got Miami uh, listed. Now, I know you said um, that that was the domestic is there mm -hmm. is there an international spot yet that you've you've picked that you're like this is my favorite like for fun this is if i ever want to just like wow out or you know <laughs> get my money up and me and my friends just have like an adventure this is the city we're going to yeah so after researching everywhere i personally have two that i want to go to um as far as everybody usually picks um bahamas so i've been there on a cruise Personally, if you go on a cruise, that's a really affordable cruise. It's most of the time you get from Miami, you can do a weekend trip to um, Bahamas. So that's somewhere that I definitely recommend if you're wanting to do a cruise weekend getaway, 
that's going to be a very affordable trip um, to go out of the country. Now, as far as for me personally, I would like to see um, the culture of Jamaica. For me, I would like to see um, grow tours. I would like to go on a grow tour and experience the uh, city and also understand the culture, the music, uh, food, everything. Uh, so honestly, I would like to take a fully escorted tour around Jamaica. Um, that is something that I do accommodate with is package tours. So if that is something that you like, you don't want to um, plan anything you like itineraries fully planned that's something that I do and that's something that I am looking at on my bucket list to do now you did you say a grow like g-r-o-w tour is that what you're saying yes so you know in Jamaica they have grow tours so it, obviously cannabis is really big there so okay they like okay history. I, I, <laughs> I, I just want to make sure we're on the same page because I was like hold up now Yes, but I, I want to educate people as far as like what you can do with it, the type of benefits. So um, having a grow tour, I think would be pretty cool to go and see in that city or in that country. Yeah, yeah. Uh, l let me let me know when you do that one. I'm going to go, I'm gonna have to go <laughs> okay. on that one. Also, like, while we're shouting out my YouTube channel, that as well, a lot of people may seem uh, scarce about that, but there is over 18 cities that has legalized it. So I have put a 420 um, package together to help people understand, like, look, if your state does not legalize it, there are some people out here that is looking for a fully inclusive trip to where they can go somewhere that is legal and that's something that I accommodate you know I do not knock anybody I want everybody to feel that luxury of travel hey I think you might be my kind of people um <laughs> no but for real like uh th that's that's true I mean like so I'm in Tennessee um exactly <laughs> and I right and I have friends that have been like man I'm out like I, I'm out like I'm just mm -hmm. moving because I don't want to deal with this. So like I could definitely see how that's a money maker. Um, and especially well now I think what Virginia, uh, yes, even, even freaking Mississippi around Tennessee. Exactly, there's places around Tennessee to where you can even drive to it and make it a weekend getaway, and it be fully inclusive to what you want to do as far as if it is uh, cannabis based. But there, that is why I. Uh, so definitely stay tuned and watch my YouTube channel because I have um, laid that out and clear as day because there are so many people that say, oh, I wish I could go here because I know it's legal. Well, let me plan a trip to where you feel like you know what you want to do when you get there. <laughs> right. Hey, yeah, I, I see collaborations with us in the future. I don't know. I'm Absolutely. not a fortune teller, but yeah, I'm, I'm starting to see stuff. Um but I do want to ask you, and I, this might sound like a silly question, but I'm I'm sure someone has asked you this before. If you go on a cruise, do you need a passport? <laughs> yes. So a lot major. I'm gonna say yes, um, because the ones that do not allow is going to, or that does not need one, a lot of times is going to be like. Uh, maybe a river cruise or something in that type of area. As far as if you're wanting to do ocean cruises, yes, you're going to need a passport. Um, there's a lot of places that do, do offer like river cruises and a lot of smaller boats um, that offer it around the city or around some rivers in the U.S. that do not offer that. So if you still want to do that accommodation to feel like you want that cruise experience, you can still have that. That is accommodable. It's just as far as ocean wise, yes, you will need a passport. Got you, got you. And like in my head, I was like, well, if you're going to a foreign country, you need a passport. But I was like, but you're like not staying there. So I didn't know <laughs> if it was maybe like a, do you know you could go to like Mexico, like just walk across the border for like the day or something like that. You don't necessarily need a passport. Yes. Oh. And, and there's some places, for instance, like Costa Rica, that you do not need a passport. There's U.S. Virgin Islands that you do not need a passport. So if you are going to places that are still in the U.S. territory, then yes, you do not need a passport. And that's something that people don't know. So yes, if you research an area that is still considered U.S. territory, then yes, you can, you can go without a passport. 
But Nassau, Freeport, you're gonna need the passport, man. Yes, and I actually went, and I was on. I was 15 or 16, I think, when I went. So I did not have a passport. I only had my birth certificate, and they made me go through customs, and it was a whole lot of extra because I didn't have it. I don't know how they 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 did let me through because I had a U.S. Uh, birth certificate and it was the original, but they were like, "Don't ever do that again." <laughs> right, and that's one of the reasons I was I was sort of asking because as a kid, I went to the Bahamas and I'm like, "Yeah, I do not remember getting a passport." And then mm -hmm. my my mom took my kids to the Bahamas and they didn't have passports, so that's why I was just like. But then I'm like, but it doesn't really make sense. You would think you would need one. So, so I yes. And I think for me, I don't, I think honestly, they, they asked me, I thought because I was the only, it sounds, I don't want to say that, but I was the only like uh, predominantly black in my family at that time. So it looked like they just like adopted me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think that was my case scenario was I was going with my uh, white side of the family and I was the only colored in that situation. So I think right. that was that was the reason they, they, they thought they was protecting you for something. They're like, hold up. What, right. what, they, what they trying to do with this lady? <laughs> exactly. But no, most of the time. Yes. If you have a kid and you're going to Bahamas somewhere, like I stated, that's uh, literally you can get to the Bahamas in um, an hour or so from Miami. So the Bahamas is somewhere that a lot of people do like to do that. We can get away, especially with kids like that. You can get away with it with, uh, with just your, um, birth certificate. Understood. Understood. Um, I have really liked this conversation. Is there anything on your end that, that you feel like you want to express, um, or that you wanted me to ask that I did not ask? No, not really. I do want to go ahead and shout out my uh, website, though. It is at yeah. bossladybio.com slash Sierra Bobo. That's C-I-E-R-A dot B-O-B-O. But um, feel free to go to my website. I have my Facebook page, YouTube channel, and you can actually start booking today on that website. Um, and as well as feel free to give me calls. I do offer free consultations for your trips. Definitely. And um, when we get off here or something of that nature, I'll have you like shoot me those links and I will post them in the um, like info section of the video as, as well. So people can just sort of, you know, uh, get your information that way as well. Okay. Um and uh, once again, I know you gave the website. Do you want to just go ahead and give the YouTube? Like if someone wanted to search for it on YouTube, what they need to search for? Yeah, they just need to look up Boyo's um, company. You can look up Boyo's channel. Um, both of them will pop up. I have them both linked. So either way, my my company will, Boyo's company will pop up. <laughs> Got you. And your, But your preferred method of being reached would probably be the website, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah, at my website, I have my my link, my bio links to everything. So once you go to my website, you can have links to all of my YouTube, my Facebook, my Instagram, everything. All right, all right. Um, no, like seriously, I, I really uh enjoyed talking to you about this, and I have a couple of ideas where we might be able to uh collaborate and use some of this networking and synergy to uh to try to do some things man so uh i'm sort of excited that uh that that i've discovered you as it were um and just shout out uh i believe it was black knoxville right is that yes black knoxville shout out to them i think it was on facebook yes 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 um definitely for making that connection and uh that's what it's about man i feel like uh once we as a people you know start working together you know economically uh you know community wise uh, i think you know we we could do nothing but great things together so i i'm i'm excited absolutely and don't be scared and that's one thing that it is about is don't be scared to interact like for me i was one of those how i want to go all in like it, whoever is open to collaborating as far as a uh, business i'm here to support small businesses i believe in small businesses supporting small businesses so um i believe in that and uh if you do have any um 
other businesses, I do specialize in helping these small businesses, you know, build a legacy for uh, your business and even your families. So that's what I'm here for.